Okay. Here we go. We're going on a safari. We spotted our first animals of the day. <laughs> Here we go. Jabo, everyone. My name is Emily. I'm going to be your safari guide for the next two to three business days. As a reminder, please stay seated throughout the entire ride. Keep all hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the truck at all times. Parents, watch your kids. Kids, watch your parents. I don't trust them either. As a friendly reminder, this is a real truck that I'm really driving. Contrary to popular belief, I am not an animatronic, and the roads out here on the reserve are going to get a bit bumpy. So you need to make sure everyone is staying seated at all times. That includes our little ones sitting on laps. Please do not lift up your child for them to get a better view. This is not the beginning of The Lion King after all. <laughs> We are starting our journey today here in the Little Aturi Forest at the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. We're also entering the animals' homes, so we want to make sure we're being as respectful as possible to them. That includes using our inside voice even though we are outside and not calling out or making any noises to these animals. Now with all my safety things out of the way, they're a little hard to see, but on that left-hand side, kind of hidden behind those bushes, we can see a saddle-built stork. Saddle-built storks get their name from that yellow saddle shape that's on top of their bill. They can have a wingspan of about nine feet long, which to put in perspective is about the same length of the bench you are currently on. Watching, so keep an eye out in those bushes as well. Gotcha. <laughs> now, coming up on the right hand side, we are going to see some greater kudus. They are one of the largest forest antelopes. We can tell that these are females because they don't have any horns. The males will have horns that are about three feet long, but they'll still be that same coloration as the females. We can also see a bongo over here on our left hand side. I'm actually going to see two of them over there. Bongos are often referred to as the ghost of the forest because they are so rarely seen. We can tell that these are females because of their reddish brown coloration. The males will still have those horns and the white stripes, but they're going to be more of a chocolatey brown color. Through here, we are entering the Safi River. Animals in the river like to use the water to stay cool on a hot day. Some of them might be out of the water today because it is a little cooler this morning. Down here, we also might see some local birds, such as any ducks, cranes, or black vultures that you see through here. We're going to be looking out for those hippos and pelicans. In that back right corner, we might have seen some hippos back there, but we'll see some more up ahead, so don't worry if you missed them. But down there, we can also see the pink back pelicans. Pink back pelicans will get their name from that pink coloration that's more prominent on their backs during mating season. I like to think it's because they're blushing. <laughs> They can also have a wingspan of about nine feet long, which is the same length as that canopy and bench that you're on. And over on our left, we can see that bloat of Nile hippos. Now hippos can actually stay underwater for about five to eight minutes before needing to come up again for air. And they're going to spend a good portion of their day in the water because it helps protect their skin and keep them cool from the sun. Now hippos have a reputation of being an aggressive animal and that's not necessarily true. They are a very powerful animal. They have one of the strongest bites in Africa, but they are more territorial than anything. So they're very protective of their own space, especially mamas with their babies. You do not want to mess with a mama hippo. If I have any parents on board, I am sure you understand how they feel. Now down there on the left 
left-hand side, we're going to see the animal with the strongest bite in Africa. It is the Nile crocodile. Nile crocodiles are the largest crocodilian in Africa. You can see a couple against the wall there and in the water as well. Their average length is about 16 to 18 feet long, weighing at about 500 pounds. Now, no one really thinks this about crocodiles, but they're actually really good parents. When the babies are having a hard time hatching, the mother or father will gently roll around the eggs in their mouths to help them emerge. Key word there is gently. <laughs> Later on today, if you want to see their cousin, the American crocodile, you can head on over to Dino Land, USA. Now up ahead, we are going to be entering the African savanna, home to the animals that might be a little more familiar to you when you think about Africa. The animals down here are free roaming and quite literally have a mind of their own. They're wild animals that are wild and predictable, so we need to make sure everyone's staying as respectful as possible to them. Y'all are doing great, so I believe in you. I highly recommend, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and turn on that sport feature or live feature on that camera or cell phone. I can't always stop for every animal that we're going to see through here, but I'll do my best to make sure everyone gets the best pictures to make everyone on Facebook jealous. Because <laughs> that's what it's all about. Exactly. Oh, is it anyone's first time on the safari today? Here. Yeah. Cool, me too. <laughs> <laughs> we're all learning together. How fun. Entirely lying to you. It is my first time out here today. Obviously, we see those Maasai giraffes off in the distance, but right away here on our right hand side, we can see some wildebeest. Now, wildebeest actually have one of the largest migrations of any land mammals. About 1.5 million of them will travel anywhere from 500 to 1,000 miles during that migration. Giraffes are the tallest land mammal in the world. They're going to be about 18 to 20 feet tall when they're fully grown. When they're first born, they're going to be about 6 feet tall and walking within that first hour of life. And giraffes are also going to give birth standing up. So when those babies are born, they have about a 6 foot drop to the ground. So they quite literally hit the ground running. Thank you for the pity laughter. I'll be here all week. <laughs> No, literally, I'll be here all week. Coming up on our left-hand side, we're going to see some sable antelopes. Now, sable antelopes will get their name from that sable brown color that they are. <coughs> They're also going to use those horns that are pointed towards their back to help deter any predators away from them. They are often seen as a symbol of protection, so they are the emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. We think they're pretty cool. Just past these giraffes, we're going to see some Ancoli cattle. Now, they're also known as the Watusi cattle, named after the village that first domesticated them. And as you can see, they have some pretty massive horns. Those horns are going to be about six feet long in total when they're fully grown. Now, they don't use those horns for fighting. They actually use them to cool themselves down. Now on either side of us, we actually can see some small tan and white antelopes as well. They're kind of in front of us on the road too. These are called springboks. Springboks are small but mighty. They can actually jump about 6 feet in the air and 13 feet forward. a good portion of their day standing up, around 16 to 20 hours of it. And they're actually going to spend most of that time eating. Now just like cows, giraffes have multiple stomachs and that's going to help allow them to keep eating throughout the day. And they also have what's called a prehensile tongue, basically meaning their tongue is long and sticky to grab their food. That tongue is also going to be a blackish, purplish color. I think we're going to see this one up here showing off that tongue here. <laughs> now, some people believe that that coloration on their tongue actually helps protect their tongue in the sunlight. Because of how often they're eating throughout the day, if their tongues were pink like ours, it'd be very sunburnt all the time. And that's just no fun for anyone. And I do need everyone sitting at all times. Blood pressure 
pictures of any land mammals. About one, or I was about to start talking about little bees. Their heart on average is <laughs> about two feet long, weighing at about 25 pounds. So they just care so much. Also, their ears are roughly shaped like the continent of Africa. That helps us out a little bit. Now, as you can see, their ears are pretty textured. Those are actually veins and blood vessels we can see through their ears. So when they're flapping them back and forth, they are not trying to fly away like Dumbo. They're actually cooling off their entire body temperature by about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Moving their ears gets that blood flowing that'll allow them to regulate their body temperature. point of our safari today. Is everybody having fun? Yes. Amazing. And now we get to go over a questionable bridge. Oh no. But hey, it looks like they added some new zip ties. <laughs> <laughs> now on either side of us we are going to be passing by some red clay. That is a wonderful sign that we'll see some more elephants nearby. I will say a lot of them like to hang out in that back corner, kind of a little farther from us. So we'll hopefully see some more. We can see some tusk marks on the right in that clay. Now the elephants are actually going to take their tusks and dig up the red clay to eat it as a snack. And when they eat that clay it'll do the same thing for them as a vitamin supplement would do for us. So if we all take our vitamins we'll be as strong as elephants. No need to Google it. That is how that works. Now coming up on our right hand side, we're gonna see some really giant trees. These are called baobab trees. Now they're often referred to as the tree of life because they can hold about 30,000 gallons of water within their trunks and roots to help them to survive a drought. Oh, here too. Animals with tusks or horns can actually pierce the tree to drink out of it as well. So they also help those animals get through the dry seasons in Africa. Wow. Now the tree of life that you saw when you entered the park today is based off the baobab tree, but unlike that one, the ones on the reserve will remain leafless around nine months out of the year. It's a family of ducks. Wait, are we in the water? Now up ahead we're gonna see the greater flamingo. Greater flamingos are the largest and lightest pink flamingos in Africa. They don't get that famous pink color though until they're about two years old. They'll be fully grown about after two or three months after they're hatched. But it takes them about two years to get that pink color, and they get that color from their diet of brine shrimps and other algaes. Also, a group of flamingos together is called a flamboyance. <laughs> now, they're also referred to as filter feeders, so they'll stick their entire head in the water to grab their food. And they don't even need to open their beaks when they come up to let that water drain through. It filters right through, leaving the food inside for them. Now here on the left we can see a mud pit. That's a good sign that we might see some rhinos through here. 
Rhinos will actually roll around in the mud to keep cool on a hot day, and it also protects their skin from the sun. So kids, this summer when it's super hot outside and you need a way to cool off, just be like the rhinos. Roll around in the mud and go right back inside. Your parents won't mind. I forgot to tell the parents to plug their ears, didn't I? This conversation never happened. Now we have entered cheetah territory. Now it might be a little too early for them. But look on that left hand side, we might be able to see them. They are really good at camouflaging in the mornings, especially when there's a bunch of leaves around. There's a person. <laughs> so cheetahs are the world's fastest land mammal. I thought I saw one, I'm not sure if I did now. Where? <laughs> No, it's just the perfect. It might be a little too early for them, but they do most of their hunting throughout the day, so they are not nocturnal cats like other big cats would be. Sneaky little buggers. So they are the most active during the day. Now coming up on our left hand side is gonna be what's called a Kobe Rock formation. And we can see a lion up there on the rock. This is a male lion. Now lions are actually going to spend most of their day sleeping or resting, around 16 to 20 hours of it. They're going to do most of their hunting at night, and most of their hunting is actually done by the female lions while the males stay behind to protect the rest of the pride. Their famous roar can be heard from about five miles away. And the obvious difference between the males and the females is that gorgeous mane we see on that male lion. So coming up on the right, we are gonna see some white rhinos. We'll get a little bit of a closer look when we go around the corner. We're also gonna see some water bucks. They're another type of antelope. They rely on water as a life source because they drink an excessive amount of water. process of creating the live action Lion King, the animators came to Animal Kingdom to draw inspiration from the lions that you saw up there. And that male lion that we saw at first was actually in a few of the live action shots that aren't animated. So congratulations, you just saw a movie star. We are very proud of him and he's not doing autographs at this time. <laughs> white rhinos. Now they'll be much larger than their cousin the black rhino. They're going to be around four to five thousand pounds when they're fully grown. Well that black rhino will only be around three thousand pounds. I say only three thousand pounds like that is not a lot, but you know what I mean. I do need everyone sitting. Now white rhinos actually get their name from their original name Vite Rhino. Vite meaning wide for their wide snouts in an African language. Vite was spelled W-I-T, but pronounced with that V sound, so through the years, Vite turned to white through a giant game of telephone. Now down on the ground on the right, we're going to see some ostrich eggs. Now ostrich eggs are the largest egg in the world for the largest bird in the world. Ostriches, when they're fully grown, will be around 8 to 10 feet tall. And those eggs will be around 3 pounds each. And the shells on those eggs are actually strong enough to withstand the force of a full-grown human being standing right on top of it without it even breaking. Oh, wow. That is not me suggesting to go stand on an ostrich egg. I want to clear that one up, because I don't think you want to deal with a very angry ostrich mama, but while she can't fly, she can run at about 40 miles per hour, so I do not recommend. Take note. Through here, we have entered the Magadi Glen, and we're going to be passing by our warden's post, where we can see the Nigerian dwarf goats that have kind of taken over the camp and the car. Good. Don't tell my boss. Nigerian dwarf goats are a domesticated dairy goat. Farmers will have them as a way to sell milk and cheese. So sometimes at the grocery store, if you get goat's milk or goat's cheese, it could be from a Nigerian dwarf goat. Ride, huh? The ones that you see over here are pretty much all fully grown. They're only going to be about two feet tall. 
And they like to spend most of their day just laying around relaxing and eating. Especially eating. Now through here unfortunately means the end of your safari, but that's not the end of the fun you can have here in Animal Kingdom. Right outside of our exit is the entrance to Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, where you can see gorillas, meerkats, naked mole rats, get a closer look at the Okabe and the Nile Hippo as well. If I have any wilderness explorers on my truck, you are on the Simba 1. That is Simba like the lion, one like the number, and that's the secret code that you need for that wilderness explorer badge. But before I take y'all to your final stop today, I do need to talk about the animals that we saw one more time. A lot of the animals we saw out there need our help, and that's because some of them are losing their homes due to deforestation. One simple thing that we can do from home to help out against this is by recycling. Using those three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Any of the little things we do at home can go a long way, not just in your local communities, but all around the world. My name is Emily from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I've thoroughly enjoyed driving y'all around. We do always say that no two safari is the same, so we really do hope to see you again sometime. But friends, here in Harambe, we don't like to say goodbye. It is far too sad, far too final, and I don't feel like crying today. <laughs> so instead, we say Quaharini, and that means to go well. So I hope you all go well, go wild out there. Have an amazing rest of your day here at Animal Kingdom and wherever your journey will take you next. What did you... What did you think of that safari ride? Because this was our first time ever. It was bumpy. It was bumpy. I, I actually have to agree very much so. 